Hey YouTube, I'm now at week 21 of my Achilles tendon rupture non-surgery route. This is my update from the last two weeks because I haven't done a video for that time period. Uh, the main reason is because if you looked at my last video, you'd have seen I uh, can now do the one-legged single calf raise, which is one of the most important milestones when it comes to this recovery because it means your tendon hasn't healed long, it's healed correctly and you're getting the right muscle strength. Um, so obviously I can only do a few of those reps now, um, and the, the longer term objective is to continue to do those single calf raises until I can get to the same as my good side, which from memory, I could do 26 of them when you measure me on, not, not a flat calf raise, when you're on a step and you go down and up. Um, when I measure myself after the eight week mark, my good leg could do 26 of them. So uh, my bad leg needs to get to 26, and that's when you obviously know you've basically got the exact same strength as your good leg. But um, the last two weeks, I've kind of been chilling out a little bit. Uh, when I say chilling out, I mean I haven't really pushed myself. I've just continued the same exercise I've been, as I've been doing um, previously. Because I thought to myself, well, I've now reached the single calf raise period, you know, around that week 18, week 20 mark. I'm way ahead of schedule, you know, most people don't get there until six month mark. So why not just take a little bit of extra time, just, you know, doing my normal my normal exercises, because I'm just trying to get rid of that Achilles tendonitis issue I've got, which is, remember, it's in a completely separate uh, section to where my tear occurred. Um, but I just want to get rid of it completely before I start doing the return to running program, because I just know it's gonna be harder to get rid of it when I start running. Um, now, on that point, I saw my physio a couple of nights ago and checked in with him and he actually kind of disagrees with the way I'm taking things. He said, if uh, he sees Achilles tendonitis all the time because joggers get it, it's quite a common injury. And you even see people that rupture their Achilles also get it as well because Achilles tendonitis occurs when you are overusing it, you know? So because it was doing nothing for eight weeks and suddenly I'm just using, all, using it so suddenly and doing so many reps, the amount of workload just gets too much and that's why you get some inflammation in that area. So it's something which is not unusual. It happens a lot to runners. It happens a lot to rupturees like me. Um, but he's saying when runners come to him with an Achilles tendon, tendonitis injury, he doesn't tell them to stop running, which is essentially what I'm doing. I don't want to do anything too uh, stressful or too strenuous. He, he allows them to keep running, but you just got to do those exercises around isometric holds, negative car phrases and things I've talked about in previous videos. So his series I should be pushing on and moving towards that goal of running um, whilst managing the tendonitis on the side. And remember, it's not a big deal. All it means is when I'm sitting down for half an hour and I get up, it's very stiff and I just need to do a one minute hold, isometric hold, and I'm back on track. Or if I wake up in the morning, it's very stiff, I have to do a one minute isometric hold and then I'm normal, I can walk normally. So it's not the end of the world, it's kind of easy to manage. So I've decided I'm gonna give it one more week of what I'm doing right now, which is just kind of doing my normal calf raises and not doing any stretching or anything like that. And if I can't shake it off completely, then fine, I'll give in and I'll start moving on with the program. So you'll find I'm now kind of slowing down. A lot of you guys who are at the same stage as me who have done a single calf raise will probably overtake me and probably start the running program. Um, but that's just my own personal choice because I've got so much time on my hands. I'm not returning back to you know, the sport that led to the injury. I'm already playing golf properly again. I'm ret I've returned to comp. Uh, which is all I care about. So I don't need to rush it. Although, having said that, the one timeline that I do want to meet is I'm, I want to go skiing this winter, which is only a couple of months away. So if I don't get the dorsiflexion stretching to going, um, it might be harder to ski. So I do need to, I can't be too lazy and I can't wait too long. Otherwise, it will impact my ski holiday. So I do need to get onto it at some stage. So that's where I'm at in terms of my thinking, just so you know. So th that's why I didn't do, do a video last week because there was nothing really new to share, but there's a lot of new stuff to share today. Um, so just be aware, as I said to you, you know, other people like, you know, Agnes, who I follow on YouTube, she returned to running at the week 20 mark. I'm now at week 21 and I haven't started yet. So I'm probably a few weeks behind now because I'm slowing down deliberately, but hopefully after this week, I'll make a decision and I might start moving towards running. Now, a few new things I want to show you that I can do. And I don't know how long I've been able to do this. I just kind of worked it out recently, but um, some of the stuff I can do, which is interesting, is I can now walk on my tippy toes. So I can go on my tippies. And because I've got good strength now, because I can do a single calf raise, or I can do an easy negative calf raise. That's when you know you can do this, is you can hold yourself on one foot. I can now walk on my tippies, which shows pretty good strength. So I'll walk around, you can see. If 
is all of my tippy toes, right? So that's pretty good to be able to have that ability. Uh, the other thing I noticed was when I used to play golf, or when I was playing golf last few weeks and I was lining up a ball for a putt, I used to crouch down like this and line the ball up because I didn't want to, I didn't know, I think I had enough dorsiflexion in my bad leg. But one day last week I realized I naturally just went and squatted and I lined up the ball like I used to do. And then I realized like, oh my goodness, I'm actually squatting again. First time I can ever remember now. Um, first time since the injury. Now, to be honest, it's actually quite easy. I feel very comfortable in this position. So who knows how long I'll be able to do this. I just didn't realize. So you find you start doing things naturally, um, going back to normal without even realizing. And you know, this is a very comfortable, very easy position. No stretch, no strain, nothing. So there are a few things that, you know, uh, uh, that I'll be able to do. The other thing I was going to say was, I'll just lift this up a little bit is my physio has got me to do some new stuff. So remember last, a couple of weeks ago, I showed a video about how we wanted to start doing some small jumps on the spot just to get used to the fast con contractions of the muscles. Uh, so now what I'm doing is I'm gonna do, he wants me to start going a little bit more, like forward. So towards the camera, I'll go back. So we're just kind of jumping forward. Um, just to get it used to that explosive movement. They're very simple, right? It's, it's quite easy, to be honest. Um, and then the other one he wants me to do is kind of just start to kind of think about jogging, like on the spot. So, you know, just kind of get used to that. Get your muscles kind of used to this kind of on-the-spot jog, right? And then you can kind of move forward a little bit. And then you're kind of almost jogging, right? <laughs> you're almost there, but it's kind of... You know, you can see a bit of a limp there as I'm just kind of protecting it right now, but you, you just want me to get, start doing a little bit more of this stuff, just to, just to get the mind and the body ready for when we do return to running. So, um, he gave me the return to running program just so I could see what you need to do. This is my good leg. To return to running, you basically got to be able to be in a position, I'll show you my good leg, where you can just kind of hop around, hop in a square, hop forward. So obviously, when you get to that stage, you're basically ready to return to running. That's what the physio has basically told me. So I don't know if I'm at that stage yet because as, I, as I've said to you, I'm just trying to manage the tendonitis issue because it's pretty annoying. Um, and as I said, I'll give myself one more week and if I can't shake it off completely, then I'm just gonna continue with all those exercises and try to push through to running and hopefully one day it goes away. The reason why I'm playing such a safe route is because I've had tendonitis before in other parts of my body. Like I had tennis elbow, just because I had a, I was hitting too many single-handed backhands. I was using this new technique of flicking the ball. This is about five years ago. And the tennis, the, it takes a long time and, and it's very annoying. That's why I just don't want to have that issue with, the, with my foot as well. But anyway, uh, I'll give you an update soon on how that strategy goes. Um, now, the other thing that was really interesting um, about my meeting with my physio and my, or my last session was he made a really interesting comment. He said to me, I have changed his view on surgery versus non-surgical pr uh, process of Achilles tendon rupture recovery. So when I first went to him, when I had the injury, you may have seen my week on video, he, he basically said, you got surgery, non-surgery route. And if it was, he was in my position, he would go down the surgery route. That's what he said to me. But he's now said, after watching your recovery, I've, you've changed my view and I will now, if it ever happened to me, I would go the non-surgical view, surgical route. And I was blown away. I was like, that is the reason why I do these videos. I want people to realize how good the non-surgery route is. You know, it's been very smooth for me. I've had a few hiccups, as you can see, you know, with my tendonitis. I've had issues with my knee before. Like, it's never going to be smooth recovery, but it's been pretty good. And he said to me, my recovery is the best recovery he's seen from this injury in terms of speed and the way it's recovered that he's seen across any of his patients in his 20 year career. And that includes surgical patients. So he's had surgery patients, he's had non-surgery patients, and he said, my recovery is the best he's ever seen. And it really confirms to him that, and we know this from the research, but it confirms that it's not about how you get the repair done, whether it's surgery or non-surgery, it's about your rehab program. And because as you can see, I'm very strict on my rehab program, I'd never miss a day. I've only missed two days when I was sick with a cold um, throughout this whole period so far. I've done my reps, my sets every single day. I'm very strict on what I'm doing with uh, the exercises. And as a result, I'm getting a great outcome. Um, 
Still a long way to go, right? I haven't re recovered, returned to sport with running and dynamic moves yet, so we'll see how that goes. But so far, this halfway mark is uh, extremely good. So, you know, it's it made my week to hear the, my physio say that he's turned and he's now he'll now do non-surgery and probably recommend non-surgery to most of his patients if they ever do come to him in the future because that's the sole purpose of why I do these videos. I just want to get the message out there. People still don't understand um, this uh, alternate route. And, you know, just the other day I was on the Facebook Achilles tendon rupture site and someone posted um, a photo of their instructions for their hospital where it said, um, keep the boot on until week 14 or week 13. And oh, if I had any hair, I'd be pulling it out because I could not believe the hospital could say that to them. The longer you stay in your boot, the much, the longer it's going to take to recover. The more calf atrophy you're going to get. You're going to lose all that muscle. It's going to take so much longer to get back on track. Um, and I was just blown away by that advice. But there's still really bad pieces of advice out there in this world. And that's why I'm doing these videos to hopefully get the message out there. And, um, you know, so I just want people to feel comfortable about this non-surgery surgery route. And as you can see with me, it's been great. As I said, I'm not there yet, but it's been a good uh, process so far. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm going to give one more week of just kind of doing normal car phrases. And occasionally this week, I might just try to do a few harder things, like maybe a one-legged car phrase here and there, because I haven't really been doing that many of those. Um, and if I can get through and get rid of the 10 nights, great. If I can't, well, I'm just going to move on and try to get to the, to the goal of running uh, very soon. So until then, please subscribe below. Uh, please leave a comment. I'd love to hear how you're going. Are you picking up any issues around tendonitis or or other issues around your foot? Or are you going well? Have you returned to running? I'd love to hear about it. And until then, I'll see you then. Bye.